Man Prime Land. Man, check this out, man. It was yesterday was rough, man. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Buffs had the uh, had their worst game to date. It was inevitable. You, you're not gonna win them all. Ch uh, things happen. These things happen. You just have to keep going, keep pushing through them. And uh, as Coach Prime says, he has something to say about it. We're gonna listen to what he had to say, and I'm gonna give you guys my opinion, and we're gonna go from there. We don't overreact over here. I have been a college football fan 45 years, man. I've been watching this game for a long time. I didn't just start watching it. I didn't just start doing these videos. I didn't just start following Coach Prime's career. None of that stuff, man. I know the whole thing from beginning to end, so I can tell you exactly what to expect, what you should expect, what you saw, and why it's not a big deal. But before we get started, make sure y'all like the video, comment y'all thoughts down below. Y'all know we're trying to go with this thing. To the moon, Alice! And y'all might see me, I'm rocking, I'm rocking my same buff shirt. I'm still, I'm still out here making these shirts, making, making all this stuff, man. I want to ask y'all a question real quick, man. Which one do y'all like the best? So we got the buffalo with the shades. Should we do it the whole, you know, the whole thing? Maybe we're going to put Colorado at the bottom? Or do we just go with the head? And, and do it like that. It's just really up to y'all. But regardless of which one you choose, man, get your tees in the breeze when you're rocking with breeze tees, man. Check it out. I'm gonna show y'all. Like this is the, this is the site. Slide over there. Cop yourself some merch. It doesn't matter what you do. We got stuff for all genres. You can make your own uh, custom type stuff, man. We're gonna rearrange this stuff. Got stuff for my ladies, for people that like to work out. All of that good stuff, man. So if you like that, man, that do your thing. Uh, check it out. And uh, also, like I said, make sure y'all hit the like on the video. And nobody told y'all this today. Y'all my brothers, my sisters, my family. Love each and every last one of y'all. We're going to hear from Coach Prime real quick. And then we shall go from there. Talk to him, Coach. I'm serious. I analyze and I understand what we're up against and what we have and what we need. One thing that I can say honestly and candidly, you better get me right now. This is the worst we're going to be. You better get me right now. And that's really exactly what it is about and that's not a whole lot more to be said, man. Listen, when you're playing college football, you're, you're a team, you have to look at things factually and go with the facts. Your team that was 1-11 last year, right? Didn't have the greatest record. Oregon was a good team last year. They, you know, they, they were. Dan Lanning is from Georgia. He came from the Georgia coastal tree, you know, was the DC or what have you. And um, he's building that team in the, in the vein of an SEC team. All that stuff starts with the line. It all starts with the line, but it's not like when he came into Oregon, he was inheriting a, a one and 11 team. We already knew through the first three games that there were some concerns on the offensive and the defensive line, whether it be size, whether it be talent, whether it be desire, whatever y'all want to call it, man. To me, I just say it's just a size issue at this point in time when you got the average, I'm just I'm just calling out numbers, man. They, we probably giving up 20 to 30 pounds a, a, across the board on the offensive and the defensive line to a team like Oregon. Now, a lot of that people are gonna say, you know, you can do play calling, you can do this, you can do that. Let me tell you what, man. I, in my high school, I played um, uh, my high school, my last year in, in high school, I was a senior the same year that John L. Harvey was a senior or something like that. He was in school when we played him. When we played John L. Harvey, that young man was 6'8", 230 pounds. I was 6'3", 180, if on a lucky day with bricks in my pocket. So what I'm saying is all the talent in the world, I think I had 23, 24 that game. He had like 60. Not even going to lie. There ain't nothing I can do with this dude end up playing, for the, playing in the NBA. There's nothing I can do with this guy. That doesn't mean I didn't give my effort. That don't mean I didn't psych myself up and give my all. That doesn't mean that I didn't come to play that night because obviously I came to play 23, 25. It's nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. But 6'8", 230 is still 6'8", 230. And over time, it doesn't matter if our skill level was the same or his far exceeded mine. If we had the same skill level, eventually he's going to win out because size just gonna, is just going to win out and wear you down eventually. That's just what it is. And so saying that to say this, we've said the entire time that, you know, we got to get better on the offensive line, got to get better on the defensive line, got to get heavier or just, just whatever you want to say, heavier, better, bigger, whatever. But we knew that those were the concerns. Oregon brought those concerns out and brought them to the forefront. And it doesn't matter, no matter how good your quarterback is, you can't keep him upright. He got, Shadur got sacked seven times. Doesn't matter how good your quarterback is. You can't keep him upright you're not going to do very well in the game. The only two Super Bowls that Tom Brady got stopped in 
was against the New York Giants. They had some of the most incredible lines ever. And that, that's not to say that New England didn't have great offensive lines because they did, but that defensive line for the Giants was just so dominant that in those games, they gave Brady fits. And so, you know, it, it, it's just like that. That's just how it is with quarterback play. If you, you, can, you can disrupt the quarterback, you can get after the quarterback. That's why guys that can get after the quarterback are so sought after. Because if you can get after the quarterback and disrupt his time and disrupt everything that's going on, then you are going to have success against most teams. And when you can run the ball like Oregon was able to, you're going to be able to pass the ball like Oregon was able to. Now you got you running the ball with impunity. Now you got to put an eighth man in the box to try to help stop. And that's just not going to matter. They just start throwing the ball over the top. And when you look at somebody, like we said, it's just levels to the thing, too, because Bo Nix went to Auburn, regular quarterback. He comes to the Pac-12. He's a Heisman candidate. And so it's just levels to it because Oregon's a really good team, but they're also a good team in the Pac-12. And you put that same team that just beat Colorado against the Georgia Bulldogs or the Alabama Crimson Tide or like Ohio State or something like that. And it's going to be a different story for them. So it's just levels to this whole thing. TCU, National Championship game. You saw what happened when they played against Georgia. It is what it is. But what I'm saying is, it look, Dan Lanning's been that, building that team like an SEC team. All of it starts with the line. Coach Prime is building the team a whole lot the same way. You've already got, you've already got three wins. You already tripled your win total from last year. It is what it is. You you got to go out, win the games that you should win, compete in the games that you can compete in. And if you're if you're competing at the end, you might as well win the game. But there are going to be some games where you're just clearly outmatched. And it's just, it, there's nothing to be taken away from it. You're not a bad team. You're not an awful team. There are a lot of teams that just cannot beat Oregon. They would have gotten the same thing. It is what it is. And so it's like, I don't want people to start jumping off the deep end or feeling like this or that. It's like you just played a team that that where you were overmatched in two areas and those just happen to be the most important areas in football, the trenches. Everything starts in the trenches. We're outmatched on the offensive line, outmatched on the defensive line. Learn from it, get better, and and don't don't even, don't even really worry about it. You just learn from it, get better, come back next week, see what's going on. Now, it's, it's, it doesn't. It's, it sucks because you don't. You're not doing any getting any favors from the schedule because you got to go against USC this week. So it ain't no. It ain't no downtime. It ain't no time to get sulk or sulk or this or that. You got to come out and play USC as tough as you possibly can, and and do whatever you can do against USC. But things to take away. You you you, you definitely still improved on your score from uh, from last year against Oregon. I think last year they lost by 39 points. This year, only lost by 36. So it's still improvement if you want to look for improvement anywhere. But that's the only thing that we can really look for with the Colorado Buffaloes is improvement over last year. And just like Coach Prime said, you better get me now because what's going to happen eventually is, you know, in the next couple of years, you're going to get Lyman. If you watch when they play, when uh, you watch the team at Jackson State the, the first year when, when, when everybody was uh, ill or whatever, the shortened year, four and three, right? Got some linemen in there the next year. Only lost one game, 10 and one. Then the next, or 10 and two. I think it was 10 and two. And then the next year, 11 and one. So you understand what I'm saying? How you how you improve over time. It is a, it is a blessing to have come out and won those first three games. And it really looks much better to go into USC three and one than it does one and three. But you're gonna run into some stiff competition with quarterback play, offensive and defensive lines and these guys are just wanting to get after it i don't mind the talking i don't mind the banter i don't mind any of that stuff because when you give when you win you get to talk your trash you get to talk that's a benefit of being a winner and and coach dad coach lanning hey all the stuff that he said before the game i'm fine with that it's like wwe you cutting a promo and you trying to say what you have to say to get your players up and every every pre-game speech is specific to the team that you're going to play it would not make sense to say, let's go beat the Bulldogs when you're playing the you're playing the Carolina uh, the, the Carolina Gamecocks, my alma mater. It wouldn't make sense to say we're gonna go between the hedges and beat the Gamecocks. You see what I'm saying? So the same thing where he's saying like you know the clicks and likes or whatever they playing for clicks and likes, we playing for wins. Listen, the whole point of it is this: you everybody's playing to win the football game, but when you know that you are in a position where 
you your team is ahead of the team that you're playing you still have to do things to get them up i ain't got a problem with what he said man it is what it is like like you know and and after the game like he said he didn't make it about the, the buffaloes or coach prime anything he just said hey we won we got to get ready for next week we're gonna play some incredible teams in this league and that's just how it is but like I said, it's not a whole lot to be taken away. It ain't time to hit the panic button. It's not time to do anything. You just got to go out there this week, practice hard, get ready for USC. And then if you don't, if you're not victorious against USC, still don't get down. It's not, it's not time to hit the panic button. You just have to go out there and beat a team that you should beat in Arizona State. And then all of a sudden you're four and two and you're still sitting pretty, still looking good. And then you're, you're still looking good for all of that. Next year, you get a couple linemen. The next year, you get a couple more linemen. You'll be just like Texas. They like Texas had a number one recruiting class, but they but they they got them. They bought the number one recruiting class, you know, a couple years or what have you. But nothing happened until they got the line. Now Texas is looking pretty good because they got the linemen in there. You, you, can't, you can't really get linemen like you can get skill positions in college. Like skill positions, linemen really don't transfer like that. They just... They just stay where they are because they know that they can go to Southwest Missouri State Library College. And if you're an outstanding lineman, you're getting drafted. So linemen don't really go anywhere like that. And uh, you really kind of have to recruit them and get them there from day one and go like that. But the good thing is, like Coach said, he's like, we just ate seven, eight pieces on the offensive and defensive line from being there. And he's absolutely right. And once you see this, like I said, a lot of people looking at this year, I, I'm, I'm looking at this year because you got an opportunity to win some games you got an opportunity to get to six wins and you can actually uh go bowling this year maybe maybe you win you know get to a bowl and win a bowl game and do all of that to me that's a successful year but i'm looking at 24 and 25 as the years to be really the proving ground uh for what what should happen or what have you but like i said not not a whole lot to be taken away from this game um ain't time to hit the panic button still everything go buffs but at the same time you just got to be real real uh, with the with the whole thing and the whole experience and just know that that in college football their levels like like I said Oregon I mean you played other teams with similar defensive and offensive lines you came out victorious you came and played Oregon you overmatched on the offensive and the defensive line did not win that game but if Oregon plays a team like Alabama Ohio State or Georgia they would be in this much in the same position and and so you see what i'm saying they'll be in much in the same position they may be overmatched offensive line or defensive line and, and it's going to be the same thing it's just levels of this stuff man so it's all good keep cheering keep believing and just know that you're not gonna win we, we're not gonna win every game bus not gonna win every game it's okay you want we won an 11 last year bus won an 11 last year it's okay got a lot of work to do a lot of work to be done let's just see how they respond and uh, hopefully they respond the right way, man. But anyway, like I said, not a whole lot to be taken away from it. Um, offensive line, defensive line was the difference. And that allowed the skill positions to shine more on the Oregon side, man. Got to tip your hat to them, man. They played a good game, man. Like I said, you know, they, they, people want to say, well, Colorado just played bad. I would like to think that the Oregon Ducks had something to do with that, though. Like, they, nobody just come out there and play bad. Like, they had something to do with that, man. It is what it is, though. Like I said, keep... Keep growing, keep believing. You know what time it is. First year, this is the fourth game. Still three and one. Maybe, you know, but just make sure you get out there. Play USC tough. Beat Arizona State next week, the next week, and see what happens, man. And uh, like I said, no time to panic. Just keep rolling. Anyway, let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. Till next time. <laughs> it's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Guys, speak.